is about the lost son. There was a man who had two sons. One day, the youngest son asked his father, Father, can I have my share? His father, his father divided the share into two. In a little while, the younger son decided that he would go to another country. In that country where he lived, he, he lived a wealthy life. But one day, he wasted all his money. So, and there was a severe, severe famine there. So there was no more food, no more clothes for him to wear, no nothing, no food. So he suffered. He hired himself to work with pigs. He ate pig food, but they never, they, it never filled up his stomach. So he wondered, in my father's house, there are hired men, and these hired men have enough food to spare. But here I am, starving to death. So he decided he will go to his father and say that he has sinned against heaven and against him and that he should never be called his son anymore. So the next morning, he got he gathered up all his things and he went to, he, he followed his journey to his, to his father's house. When his father saw him from far, he was very happy. So he went and hugged him. But the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I shouldn't be called your son anymore. But, but his father said, Servants, go bring a, the best robe to put on his, on his body. Go bring sandals to put on his feet, and go bring ring to put on his finger. For we shall have, for we shall have a party, and go kill a fatted goat. But, but the younger son was so confused. The older son was in in a farm, and when he came back, he heard music and and dancing, and he wondered what's going on. So he called he called one servant, and he asked, "What's going on?" And the servant said. Your, your, your younger brother is back, so your, your dad killed a fatted goat and said let's have a party. The older son was, was so mad. So his father came, came out of the party and asked him, what's wrong? And he said, father, I have been with you all these years, slavering for you, but you've never ever killed me a fatted goat to have a party. But here's my brother who was in another country and came back and you have, you have killed a fatted goat for him. His father said, you don't understand my son. Your brother was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. And so, and so the older brother was like, oh, he, he understood. So they, 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 he went and joined the party. So this, the moral of the story teaches us that it's never too late to say sorry to God and that God will always forgive us no matter what we do. Amen. Amen. Can you please come pray for us? And somebody may be in this church thinking that we are going to do a wrong summons. And the summons is almost over. Uh, my daughter gave the story here. It was about the lost son. And therefore, as a family, we said that's what we are going to preach today. And therefore, I was left with a small part. As the portion which I was given, I will make sure I do it. And the portion is to say what the story is. So the thing is, uh, the story was clear to everybody. 
Because my daughter Mofin did her best to young. So in school, in school, in school, when I was in school, I used to like two subjects. Uh, rich again in English and Fasiyak Swahili. I had a reason why I liked these subjects. Uh, these subjects were not something that you could read and read in there. You could who follows the, the, that main character and then it the minor characters now in this story about the Rosh son the main character is the father and the second character is the younger son the, uh, the minor character is the uh, eldest son Therefore, uh, this is a full connection of the lesson today. Because the lesson today, if you want the lesson in the morning, you had uh, a, a good topic that was giving us uh, was giving us the connection between Jesus and those who are not liked. It was saying cultural, uh, close cultural mission. And therefore, I decided to continue with that reason. And in that uh, reason, uh, there was a story about the Samaritan. The Samaritan was never liked. He uh, was, wasn't liked. So, people were saying, why? Why should he go with these people? So in this story of the good son, I mean of the uh, Roski son, the father he said, is the main character and you can see his uh, character is constant. It doesn't change. He is unchanging father. He has love for his child. And he continues to love his son. Despite his faults. Throughout the story, you can see the attitude of the father. Uh, the attitude of the father, even if he's in the home, still the mind is, my son will come back. My son will come back. That is why in the story, when it is not given that the boat was there, that the son is coming, but whenever his father saw the son, he quickly ran to hug the son because the mind was always in the son. In the, in the son. The younger son, okay. he also was somebody who surprises the rose. Uh, simply in those days they were the tax collectors and the sinners of those days and the third son who, I mean the second son who is the elder son he represented self-righteousness he represents the Pharisees and the teachers of the law he also as you can see in this story Jesus wanted to show us that uh, the laws are there yes but in my own opinion, 
I have my own principles. And therefore, as a father of the family, I could not, I mean, I cannot let my child go be eaten by the dogs. I am here as a father. And the major theme of this uh, parable. He doesn't much know so much about the conversion of the sinners. He doesn't really deal with the conversion of the sinners. It deals with the restoration of the sin, uh, of the believers into fellowship with the Father. So when the son asked the father about, about uh, what uh, I mean about coming back, uh, the father did not like to have all the stories that the son had planned to tell the father. He already knew the son had come home. But the son had con I mean, confusion. What would I tell my father? He had a lot of stories that he could tell the father. But the father did have that much time to wait for the story. It is the same way to the sinner. It is the same way to the sinners. We are welcome to God. We are planning to do our, our much stories. That we want to tell God. Oh, I have done this because of this. God will not like to have your excuses. What he needs is you to come back home. That the Father. In the story, represents God. The son, in, uh, the younger son, surprises the tax collectors and the sinners of that day. The elder brother represents the Pharisees and the teachers of the Lord. So, when the son decides to reflect on his, uh, uh, on his uh, way, to tell what he has done, it has a big pain to him. So as sinners, we are pain, we are pain with what we have done. We are pain with what we have done. But the big idea is to, tell, to let you understand that God welcomes you the way you are. The way you are. He doesn't want your excuses. He just wants you home. He wants you to come back home. And in this story, we can also see that the son who used to be home who has never been killed a god is annoyed I mean he is annoyed he is annoyed because he, something has been done which has never been done to him this is a big reflection to us in this world in this world as we live we have a lot of jealousy. We have a lot of things against our brothers. Sometimes simple things happen. We keep these simple things. Forgetting that God has no other thing. He only welcomes you home despite you have made a mistake. Despite you are, you are, you are wrong. The younger son is quick to tell his father, Father, I want my portion. I want my portion of the estate. This symbolizes that sin is quickly requested. 
and he makes yours so quick to, re to, to request and he talk, or, 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 or. when you request you are so furious to get it but remember you don't know what's ahead the younger son requested this wedding he requested this portion he went so happily from home he told the family pie till we meet I think according to what I see in the story, I see that the son, when he was walking out with his bags, he was happy that now I have done it. But this wasn't. When he reached in that land, he was so happy to enjoy. He enjoyed. But things fall apart. Things for a past. It was never what he expected. It is the same with sin. We are quick to go out. We are quick to, uh, to react. When sin comes into our reflection, but in the other world, it isn't the same. We need to, uh, we need to think twice before we ask for our wedding. We, we need to think twice before we ask for our portions. Your portion should be in the road. Your portion should be in the road. When we read in the book of Ephesians uh, 2 verse 19 to 21 more especially in verse 21 uh, it has something good for us Something good for us. Somebody who has heard it can read it. Two first name. What's special point one? Okay. Uh, when we start from verse 19, it says we are uh, constantly, we are not, you are no longer uh, foreigners. You are not aliens. But fellow citizens in the household and are uh, built on the foundation of the uh, the foundation of the apostles and prophets. With Christ Jesus Himself at the chief cornerstone. So your life. You need to build your life in Jesus. Jesus should be the cornerstone. Uh, once you are building Jesus, you will not be able to do anything that is against him. And in the story, the Lord doesn't treat us as, sin, as, our, as our sins he deserves. All that sin pay back the way you have done. If you did, uh, he, he could have, I mean, the, the father could have done it to his younger son. But in the states, he saw compassion. He saw compassion to his son. So the Lord is showing compassion to us. That is when you read from Psalms 103, verse 10 to 13. 
uno que viene conmigo y que viene con mi amistad. So, there is compassion. I'm a ver an arrow from the road. And that is the compassion that we need to have as people in the church. We need to have this kind of compassion. We need to have our brothers come back. The other son also illustrates that outwardly the I mean, like the Pharisees, they were outwardly blameless. They were blameless in their lives. But inwardly, they, their, their character was abominable. Because when you see his brothers coming back, he goes back to the field. Because he doesn't want him. He was not happy. Uh, he did know. He did show love to his brother. Instead of what he did, instead of what he did, it could be his duty. To, uh, for him to reconcile him and his brother with the father. Yes, that could be his duty. We have been given a mission. We have been given a mission. And our mission is to tell the good news to, uh, to the world. And why you are telling the good news to the world, you need to re reconcile those who have gone apart from what God needs them to do. It's an appeal. It's an appeal. It's an appeal to us all that everybody should be uh, in right in right way with God. We need to straighten our ways with God. Don't fear whatever you have done. Don't fear uh, whatever you have done. Fear not what you have done. Don't fear whatever you have done. And don't be contented that you are the right person. Uh, so that you can be saying, Oh, uh, he's not what. Uh, so that you can be saying, Oh, he's not what. The father, the story of the lost son, gives us a great direction that we should read in uh, our leadership. Whichever mistakes may be made, uh, we need to uh, have our brothers together. Make them have the knowledge of God. And in this way, our brothers will be understanding about the way of God. So sometimes you find uh, if I make a mistake people will be singing in the church Oh, Henry made this mistake. So he needs not to stand in front of the people. Uh, it is you. It is you. You are singing that. But God has a different song. The song God has, whichever thing I have done, He welcomes me. He welcomes me. Therefore, my brothers. You are all welcome to God. You are well, all welcome to uh, come to the, uh, the, the, the before God. So that we sing one word. One song. And the song we will sing will be welcoming everybody to come together. And in this way, I therefore call my son and my daughters. Uh, and my daughters and uh, then they sing you the song so come we sing that song yes come we sing that song 
Yes. Amen. My mistake, God knows it. And therefore, when God is welcoming me, you will remain singing my mistakes. You see, the elder son was singing, Oh, this son has finished problems. I mean, uh, what the world is. And even when you see the statement he puts, he doesn't say he doesn't address his father as father. He says, This is your son. This is your son. Which means he is not even a brother to him. This is the same way. We are doing. We are always singing problems, I mean, uh, uh, mistakes of our brothers. But remember, 
Why do you are seeing that? God is welcoming that ground. Bless that as we pray. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad.